Around the World with Valerie Shannon. Travel across Iran has become the next stage of the project World Without Visa, within which Valerie Shannon travels only to the countries for the Russians with no visa required. In this journey, his fellow travelers were Alex Semichev from Tashkent, Kate Klementeva and Admila Kachanova from Sakhalin Island, and Mikhail Ivanov from Almata. Iran is a unique country. In the opinion of UNESCO specialists, it is included in the list of three countries with the wealthiest cultural and historical heritage. And at the same time, it is not included in top 100 on number of tourists. The reason is evident. Image of country of evil. But one may reject prejudices and look at Iran with his own eyes. Iran, country and people. April, spring. In Moscow, snow is still lying and tulips are already blooming in Iran. Valery Shanin, Alex Hamichev and Admila Kochinova fly to Baku from Domodedovo Airport 3 together. They meet there Kate Klementeva and Mikhail Ivanov. They fly to Tehran, five together already. The first breakfast in Iran, surprisingly modest. No comparison with Turkish one, for example. <laughs> Women have been already dressed according to the local traditions. Women are not permitted here to go out without a shawl. Foreign women are also concerned in it. All large cities are the same. Fast in the streets, smog, which is added with a specified stink of cheap petrol in Iran, traffic jams on the roads. Street traffic is irregular in Tehran. Pedestrians cross the street at any place and time they want. Traffic lights and zebra crossing are no authority for drivers at all. The caves of Ali Sadr are considered to be the most famous places of interest in Iran. There is a water route for tourists. Its length is 2,000 meters, the longest of the boat underground routes in the world. In the cave, all the visitors have been given live jackets. Three boats have been coupled in one train. Catamaran has become the locomotive where two boaters are drilling. One millimeter every hundred years. And this looks like waterfall. First people come about 50 years ago. The entryway has, has been discovered in about 400 years ago as safety, the entryway, just the entryway. They didn't have the enough they didn't have enough facilities for them to come to the road. And this here we have uh, this looks is the shape of uh, Liberty Statue. Flat cakes weren't bought. We went to have a lunch, and then we immediately got underway. The petrol costs little in Iran. To travel by taxi here is cheaper than to travel by bus in Russia. And if splitting this sum on five people, it will be almost free of charge at all. It's not a rubbish heap, but the waste products of ceramic production. Ready-made products are stored at the same waste plot of land. The local people came over to meet us, so it was them who took us to the nearest ceramics factory. Furnace has been already filled with the articles ready to be burned, but the works still continues. Shahrul Alizin city, or just Lalin, in 20 kilometers northward from Hamadan, the largest center of ceramic production in Iran. 80% of population are involved in ceramic production or at least have an occupation connected with it. Ceramics is made as in old times and the old way, manually. On potter's wheel, invented thousands of years ago. 
Frankly speaking, without food drive, but with electric one. In handicraft workshops, it can't be called a factory. There are usually no hired people. All work is performed by the members of one family. Ceramics is the family business, and it's not bad, because the annual income from ceramics production export only makes up more than $30 million. There are few English language experts in Iran. One must communicate mostly with the help of pictures. <laughs> Hamadan is one of the most ancient cities in Iran. In the ancient times it was called Egbatana. In the center of Hamadan, there is a mausoleum of Feste and Mordecai. Nobody knows when it was built exactly but Jewish travelers of the 13th century had already seen it. And Jews in Iran in that time had already set out on the pilgrimage to it annually. The Book of Esther is included in Old Testament in Christian Bible. On the wall there is a line from the Book of Esther. Mordecai the Jew was next unto King Artaxerxes and great among the Jews and accepted of the multitude of his brothers seeking the wealth of his people and speaking peace to all his tribe. The study of other inscriptions in the tomb has shown that there were buried two brothers, serving as doctors in court of Mongolian rulers in Iran, and not Esther and Mordecai as it was thought before. Now there are 45,000 Jews in Iran. They are who give money for the maintenance of the tomb. Memorial of Sand Defense is dedicated to all Iranians who died in the Iran-Iraq war. On the Great Territory, grand monuments, busts of heroes, models of military equipment are installed. In the museum, there were recreated the most meaningful scenes of war. Collected historic documents, photos. Belong to the Air Force. This gallery is belong to the Air Force. You see the planes. One of those professors in nuclear killed in his car by the bombs of the mm -hmm. terrorists. Israel terrorists. <laughs> Foreigners come to Hamadan rarely. That's why the travelers provoke curiosity every time. <laughs> <laughs> The city surrounded by green mountains was summer residence of kings. On the outskirts of Hamadan, in Canyon Alvand, in the park near waterfall Granjnama, stone writings were saved. All of them tell us about the victories of the Persian king Dari. Fortress Nazijan was built in 750 BC. The place was wonderful. On the top of almost right cone-shaped hill, standing out among the plain. The fortress was three-storied and 27 meters high. It enclosed a Padana palace, two Zoroastrian temples and barracks, living accommodation and storehouses as well. The fortress existed during Achaemenid Empire and during Parthian Kingdom. Excavations were being conducted by English archaeologists under Professor David Stronach's supervision. There were who built the iron roof for defense of walls made from unbaked brick. Здесь не так просто все на корточках приходится заходить. Почему? Потому что очень низкий ход. И очень достаточно крутой, в принципе. Мишка, осторожнее. Внизу помещение какое. Ход оказался тупиковый. Внизу есть казематы. Но вход завален. Пробраться дальше не удалось. Но куда-то пробрались все-таки. 
Хорошо, Опа. клаустрофобия, никто не страдает. Да, и не говори. Ой, ой, разогнуться хоть можно. Первый раз едет человек в тоску. Да? Да. Ну, а как ощущение? Ощущение. Ощущение, ощущение классные. Ощущение крещения. А? Дорога, дорога. Ума. Да, да, да. Понятно, да. Спасибо. 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 Таксист вилял петлял и вот прям, можно сказать, привез нас тогда, когда нужно, чтобы мы сели именно на этот поезд. Near the village Bish, there is a waterfall of the same name, one of the most famous in Iran. The travelers got here on Friday, a holiday for Muslims. On the bank of the river there is a crowd of people. Families have gathered here. There are large companies of youth as well. <laughs> Yeah. Province Lobistan is the dumpest place in Iran. Precipitation falls here mostly. That's why the mountains of Zagros are so green. Ставили вроде ничего, да? Ветра нету. А потом как ветер начался, и у нас одна из палок этих сломалась. Пришлось, короче, верхнюю часть снимать. Засовывать в палатку, накрываться как одеяло. Ну, эффект какой-то все-таки это дало. А так бы, наверное, вообще уже не разговаривали бы сейчас. In spring, the slopes of the mountain Osteran are covered with flowers. Among them, there are unique inverted tulips, or in Persian, Nalevasgun. They are also called Ashkemarian, or Mariam's tears. In Russia, there are similar flowers. They are of spotty colors by us and called hazel grouses. The travelers plan to walk up the mountain Osteran. Its height is 4,050 meters, but they couldn't. It was drizzling from early morning. Huntsman gave the travelers tea and persuaded not to go up. Weather forecast was not comforting at all. And there was no surprise. Loristan confirmed the fame of the dumpest region in Iran again. <laughs> Citadel, Fala Ola Flak, in translation it means the heaven of heavens, was built in Horemabada during the reign of Sassanid's 3rd 7th centuries. Because of the damp climate of Floristan, it was very important to locate the buildings in such a way that dominating winds could blow the walls and save them to grow musty from dampness. To reach the water, we had to dig the well at a depth of 40 meters. In the mid of 20th century, during the reign of dynasty Piklevi, there was a prison and fortress. Now it is a museum dedicated to the history of the country and city. In Iran, Muslims Shiites leave. It is a usual thing to see the funeral in the streets. It is mourning for Imam Hussein and other Shahids died for the belief and fatherland. Oriental hospitality. These two words describe the attitude of Iranians' travelers. They are always ready to help tourists with a piece of advice. They treat and ask over. In the evening, they give lodging for a night. 
Dustful was called Dustful before. Its name consists of two words, Des, fortress, and Pal, bridge, and is translated as bridge to the fortress or reinforced bridge. The fortress has not been saved till our times, even if it existed, but the bridge exists. It was built by Roman war prisoners, captured by the army of King Shapur the Great in the 4th century. From that moment, the monument to the grandeur of slave labor stands here. The ruins of water mills are seen from the bridge. They were built in 3rd century BC and were used at the intended purpose up to the beginning of 20th century. All ancient buildings in the old city were laid from unbaked clay. They are gradually destroyed and changed to standard concrete boxes. Originating in mountain Zagros River, Karun is the largest in Iran. It goes in deep canyon which separates the old city from new areas. In 3rd century, Roman war prisoners worked in Shustar and building of Banda Kaisar or Caesar's Dam. Construction of about 500 meters long is considered the farthest eastern bridge built by the Romans. Later, during the times of Safavid of dynasty, which began its reigning in the 14th century, next to the dam, engineers created a complex hydrotechnical construction. Water was distributed in a number of separate streams for to turn the wheels of water mills. All this variety of channels, waterfalls and rapids are included in the list of UNESCO World Heritage Objects. <laughs> In Iran, it is difficult to refuse invitation, and it's silly to refuse a cup of tea in a hot day. We decided not to stay for a night. Sun is still high in the sky. Having taken a glance at a hydrotechnical museum of ancient Iran from above, from a high precipice on the right bank of the river, the travelers went to the bus station. In the evening, we got to Shush. The fortress is lighted but obviously empty and lifeless. Near the burial vault of Hebrew prophet Daniel, looking at a typical Shiite mosque, there is much noise and many people. There is no place near the town, and even all courtyard is crammed with people. There are many women with children here. They are clustering together near octagonal fountain, and men are taking part in the ritual of remembrance of Shahid. Then I lifted my eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram, which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the high came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward, and northward, and southward, so that no beasts might stand before him, neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand. 
but he did according to his will and became great. This vision, written in the Bible in the book of Daniel the prophet, took place on the bank of river Karun, the very river which the tomb is standing at. In the scriptures of Old Testament, city of Shushan is often mentioned. It is the ancient capital of Elam. It is written about in the book of Esther, Nehemiah the prophet and Daniel the prophet. But there are no exact coordinates there. There were many hypotheses, and only in the end of the 19th century, the archaeologists could hardly establish that ancient Shushan was Iranian city Shush, in the province of Hazestan. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white, and with a great crown of gold, and with a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Susa rejoiced and was glad. Such description is written in the Bible in Book of Esther about the event that occurred here. The most intensive excavations were conducted in the end of 19th century. During this period, in these places lived martial tribes, not obeying Persian authority. Archaeologists had to save their lives themselves. The government of France gave money to the building of fortress. Later on there was opened the archaeological museum. Durun Tash, or in the modern Persian Choga Zambil, is the ancient temple complex, extant from Elam state, one of the most ancient on the earth. It is called Zikrat from the Babylonian language Zikratu, top of the mountain. The main component for the building of Zikratu was air brick, additionally reinforced by the layers of reed. The city was surrounded by three lines of wall. The first wall surrounded Zikrat itself. Between the first and the second walls, there was king's palace and temples dedicated to different gods. There are a few things left after them. Excavations were conducted in the middle of the previous century by French archaeologists. Afas, the winter residence of Persian kings, now is administrative center of the province Hazestan. There are a few things left after this ancient city. Along river Karun, there is a park with embankment, gym apparatuses and a number of fountains. The local bus station gives an opportunity to go to any big city of the country. Iranian province Fars is the historic center of the country. Its name originates from the old Iranian word Pasu, strong man. Later on the ground of it appeared the name of the people, Persians and country Persia. The capital of province Fars is Shiraz. Fortress Ar Karim Han is the most impressive construction in the center of Shiraz. During the reign of Zen dynasty in the 18th century, there were king residents here, after all, prison. Now in the courtyard there is an orange garden. There is a small museum of local history in the building surrounded by the court and decorated with huge windows. Shiraz is one of the most popular centers for tourists in Iran. Here you can run into foreigners and even Russian-speaking ones. Vakil is a market in the center of Shiraz. It's intended for tourists. When I choose the beauty of Shiraz, my idol, for her mole I give Samarkand and Bukhara, wrote the native of Shiraz, Haji Shams Adin Muhammad Hafiz Shirazi, poet and Sophie master, one of the greatest lyricists of the world poetry. 
In Iran, he has many male admirers and much more female ones. They come at the time of their idol with the volume of favorite verses and flowers. On the gravestone, there is a verse of Hafiz carved, When you come to this tomb, show your magnanimity. Do not judge those idler pilgrims who have gathered here. Near Shiraz, there are lots of ancient temples, palaces, tombs, and cities in ruins. Next to town, Firuzabad, there are ruins of the Zoroastrian temple Kalea Dokta. In the past, there was a mountain lift. But after Islamic Revolution, the number of tourists decreased greatly and the lift was closed. Neither gate, no fence, no security. One has to go and think about what exactly it is. There were no ceilings in Zoroastrian temples. Zoroastrians worshipped the sky and the fire. So they were called fire worshippers. Palace Adashir Parakan was built in 221 AD for the king Adashir, the first from dynasty Sassanid. There were three grand domes on the palace. They were to testify the grandeur of Persian state. The main dome, destroyed partially, rose to 18 meters. Inside the palace, there was a throne hall and an assembly hall for foreign ambassadors. Night caught the travelers when they were on the wheat field. They stayed for the night at the edge of it. And in the morning they departed to Necropolis, Nakshira's Tam, which was just the stone's throw from there. The tombs of the kings from dynasty Achaemenid are carved in the rock at a distant height from the ground. They're famous as Persian crosses, it's clear why. In the center of every giant cross in the rock there is a small cell, while there is a sarcophagus. There are the most powerful Persian kings of 6th to 5th BC buried. Kaber Zartosh, from Persian stands for the Rostrian Cube, was built in 5 BC. The triumph of Persian King Shapur I of the Roman Emperors Valerian and Philip August is shown on the relief. On the other reliefs, there are scenes of great battles with participation of Persians. On the oldest relief, the national hero Rustam is supposed to be imaged. His heroic deeds are described in details in the poem of Firdusi Shahnameh. Old Persian city Tahteh Jamshid is famous under his Greek name Persepolis, that literally means city of Persians. The ruins of the city, that from 520 BC, was the capital of powerful empire of Achaemenid, took a very large territory. Palace Apadan stands on the terrace elevated over ground level at 4 meters. There is a solemn procession of high officials and servants imaged on the stone's plates. Grand gaze of false states, decorated with giant winged oxen with human heads. Foreign ambassadors went to the King Palace through these gates. Now it is the main entrance and exit of Persepolis for tourists. Pasargari, or Gardens of Fars, is the ancient Persian city. Ruins are scattered at square of two square kilometers. The mausoleum of Kir the Great rises solely right next to the entrance. In 6 BC, he established the first Persian state. This pyramidal-shaped mausoleum inspired architect Shushev to build mausoleum for Lenin at the Red Square. The ruins of two kings' palaces are also saved. Then, a piece of wall of the building, which is also called Solomon's Prison, and the fortress Toletah on the hill, where one can have a glance at the whole ancient city from at once. To be exact, the things left after it. There are no hotels in small towns in Iran. 
but there are rooms for pilgrims practically near each mosque. Not only Muslims can stay there, in Iran every guest is a minister of Allah. City Yazd, or Yazd, is one of the most ancient cities of Iran. It is famous for its original cooling systems of houses. Wind catcher or towers of wind serve to pump in cool air into the house. Despite the city is about 5,000 years old, the most vivid architectural construction are the mosques. Mosque Amir Chakmak is a visit card of Yazd. There was time when tourists were permitted to visit minarets, but now the building is in emergency state and the entrance is closed. The figures of water carriers are installed in the fountain. Here, among desert, water is always worth weight in gold, and water carrier is the most honorable occupation. Friday Mosque Jamer was built in the 13th century, but it looks strong enough. Its minarets, 52 meters high, are the highest in Iran. The entrance is free, but except empty rooms, there is nothing to look at. Except for tourists. All buildings are used as hotels and restaurants for tourists. Ancient mud dwellings are gradually destroying. Not all hosts have enough money for expensive restoration. There is no money even for a pair of mosques. Saint Sayyid Rohnadin mausoleum was built 7th century ago and is also repaired inactively. The old city is a complicated net of interlaced streets that are hidden from the scalding sun. It is easy to get tangled there as you may not understand where the east and west are. Markings of the crossroads will help you. They show the direction to the most famous sites. Alexander prison there. Zendana, Alexander, or the prison of Alexander, doesn't relate to Alexander the Great. Earlier this building wasn't the prison. It is a madaza built in the 15th century. There are lots of rooms underground, but they were dug not for keeping criminals. It is colder there than exteriorly in the daytime. In Yest, there are a lot of underground rooms, often derelict. The Zoroastrian temple, Chak Chak, is carved in the mountain Pire Saps, 70 kilometers away from Yest. There are steps that go from the park into the temple. The temple itself is a small cave with an altar and the water dripping from the ceiling. The sound from fallen drops in Russian it sounds as Kap Kap and in Persian Chak Chak gave the name to an ancient sanctuary. Water is considered to be sacred and every pilgrim or tourist can't resist the temptation to taste it. The mountain slope in the neighborhood with the cave is built up with houses. They belong to the pilgrims who arrived to the cave during the most significant religious holidays. Maybod is one of the oldest cities of Iran. In the 14th century, it was the capital of the country. The fortress Narenj, known also as the castle Narin, was constructed on the hill Galin in the pre-Islamic times. Being in the fortress, you can see quarters of one color brick houses and narrow and curved small streets. The travelers examined all caravanserai and the so-called ice house in the dark. It wasn't possible to find either hotels or mosque with rooms for pilgrims in Maybot for a night. Mm -hmm. They had to sleep in some garden under pistachios. Oh, 
фисташка вон. Да? Да. Ездим, там кости от мамонта. Это съели там, волки. Я же говорю, волки. From the early morning, we were on the way to Isfahan. All tourist routes around the city begin on the central square, Imam Square of Khomeini. То на такси, то на извозчике, то пешком ходим, много-много ходим. Ходим, бродим, ну ладно, мы поехали. The square, 512 and 153 meters in size, is the largest in Iran. It is the second by size in the world and consists only to Ainanman Square in Beijing. Sheikh Lutfullah's mosque was built on the east side of the square at the beginning of the 17th century after the personal order of the Shah Abbas I. The mosque of the Imam, or the Shah's mosque, that is the largest mosque in Isfahan, was built approximately in the same years. Walls, niches and ceilings were decorated with a mosaic, an ornament and a ligature. There are lots of mosques in the old city. Most of them are either being repaired now or need repair urgently. 50 years after the death of the Prophet Muhammad, Yazidi ibn Muawiyah seized the power in the Islamic world. The Imam Hussein didn't recognize his supremacy. The opponents met in the battlefield in al Kufis vicinities. We came here not for the sake of war, but we can't surrender to the force and evil. We will prefer death to humiliation and approval of tyranny. And blood of those who are killed by tyrant steadily wins the victory over the swords of this tyrant, said Imam Hussein before he and all his supporters and relatives were killed, and their children and women were took as prisoners. In memory of this tragic event, special ceremonies are held on the streets of the Iranian cities and in the courts of mosques. During these ceremonies, the participants beat themselves with iron chains and lashes. They want to feel on their own skin the torment that Imam Hussein had to overcome, and at the same time they want to pay a tribute to the memory of all Shias who became Shahis, the sacred soldiers of Islam. Live hens are sold in the poultry market as domestic pets, but not for meat. Carrier pigeons of the most different types and colors can be found there. And motor shell parakeets are also sold there. And what is absolutely surprising, colored chickens. The excursion across Isfahan began on the central square, and here it comes to an end. Before the sunset, when the heat starts falling down, not only tourists come there, but the local people as well. The atmosphere is informal like in the city park on the day off. When it gets dark, all people move from the square to the central city street, filled with shops and snack bars. There are so many people that sometimes traffic jams occur. Zia and River flows through the center of Isfahan, dividing the city into two approximately equal parts. Ancient bridges that are built through it are considered to be tourist sites, but not only tourists come to the river. A park that is very popular among the locals stretches along it. In the evenings, there is not an inch of room there. The whole families come there, including grandfathers, grandmothers, grandsons and great-grandsons. Young people, of course, prefer to crowd together, away from parents. On one bridge, people sing bad songs. On other, religious anthems. There is no police anywhere, but there are no disorders. Nobody harms anybody. There is no drunk person, several thousands of people. It's fantastic. Very, very cool! <laughs>
Kashan is the most ancient city of Iran. Those three magicians who came to welcome baby Jesus lived exactly there. Old houses are not preserved today. The earthquake that happened in 1778 raised them to the ground. Everything that is possible to see now has been constructed later on ruins. Most old buildings, palaces and mosques were built in the 19th century. Kashan always was a trading city and the local covered market is its main site. As in the Soviet period, in the USSR, there were palaces of culture. There, the real palace of trade are. Everything that Iran is rich in is sold in the market. The most part of the goods that are on sale there is done in the neighboring rooms or directly behind a counter at the time when there is no buyers. In the center of the market, in the waiting room of an ancient bath tea house was opened. Tea is amazing. It goes with a wide selection of sweets and spices. The sellers offer the visitors a traditional Iranian dish, soup agbusht. It is extremely hot and is solid in a clay pot, directly from the furnace. It should be eaten skillfully. In the beginning, it is necessary to merge the liquid in a metal plate and mash the remain thick in a pot. Meat, fat tail fat, potato and lentil with the help of a special mortar. The business passes from father to son. The current owner, he is not young now, inherited it from his father and grandfather. Now this is tea house. He remembers the time when there was not a tea house but a bath. Demand for bathing services fell, so it was necessary to train for a new profession. Mm -hmm. But the bath wasn't broken. It was preserved waiting for better times. The covered market stretches for several kilometers. People start working early in the morning and in the afternoon market streets become empty. Borujurdi's house was built by the architect Ali Maryam Kashani. It is decorated with the rich stucco molding, vase reliefs, paintings and frescoes created by the artist Sani Ol Malcolm and his apprentices. The buildings that are surrounding the yard and green vegetation are reflected in a mirror of the pool of the extended form. The two-story state room is decorated with niches and frescoes. Behind it, there is one more room that looks simpler. Below, there is a deep, cool cellar for product storage. Mosque Aha Bazor is one of the most impressive and biggest construction of Kashan. The admission is free. The fortress that is situated in the very center of Kashan was constructed by an order of Sultan Malik Shah in the 11th century. The swollen cup walls and pyramids that are not less great than pyramids in Egypt, though they are of different form, have remained till today. Wow. <laughs> Ну ты спрыгивай, скинем эти рюкзак-то. Ага, вы мне придавите им. Да не придавим, не придавим это идет. Отдайте мне рюкзак. Ну попадали бы что ли, ешка в кот. Пересекаем. Лень обходить. Думаем так. Италия. Русия. Давай, 
The garden Shafin, or Bafin, was created in full accordance with Islamic idea of paradise. It is walled in and there are lots of greens and streaming water inside. The garden was created at the beginning of the 16th century, in the period when the Shah Ismail I, the founder of the Safavid dynasty, reigned. And for the succeeding governors, it remained the favorite place for having rest in summer. Water arrives from the Soleimani source. It is rich in mercury. This water is not recommended to drink, but it is useful to take bath there. There are plenty of green plane trees, artificial reservoirs, fountains and ancient buildings in the garden. The village Abyan lies at the height of 2100 meters above the sea level. Вот такая ночная деревня Абьяне. Никого нет, кроме нас и пирог. It is very cold there in April. Travelers prefer to stay in hotel instead of freezing in a tent. The village Abyan is almost unchanged since the 3rd century. People always were isolated there and didn't mix up with strangers. Islam was accepted, but women didn't change the color scarves on the black ones, traditional for Iran. The name of the village is translated as a place where willows grow. Willows are really growing there, but there are much more apple trees than willows. The youth leaves this place searching for the job, and only old men and women live in the village. The village was stuck to a mountain slope. It is densely built up with red clay houses, with balconies, decorative lattices, carved wooden doors and arch windows. There are lots of narrow streets, lanes and ladders. There is a mosque and a grocery bench. And we are again on the way. The bus stopped at a roadside snack bar on the way to Tehran. We didn't stop in the capital of Iran and went to submit the highest point of the country. Davaman, in translation from Persian, means smoking. Vulcan doesn't act, but its top, that is 5,610 meters high, is almost constantly shrouded with clouds. The Rostrians claim that the evil ghost Divarasp is shut in the subsoil of the mountain. The smoke curling at top is his breath. Travelers found a shelter in the house of the grandfather Hassan. Grandpa Hassan explained that the rise on the volcano wasn't difficult. It is possible to climb on the top during the day, but we could not return alive. When people rise swiftly on the height of 5 kilometers, they usually face with high sickness. The only well-tried remedy is gradual acclimatization. That's why the route to top is divided on three days with spending the night in a mosque and a mountain hut. But it's actual only for a summer season. In April, snow lies above, 
and it is dangerous to rise on the top even for skilled climbers with special equipment. Only summer, these two months finish, two months. These months finish, or the behest for that, okay. Two months finish, two months finish. Uh, Early morning, very, very sunny, summer. warm in the sun. Yes, only summer, very good, very hot. So the mountain climbing expedition is cancelled. But nobody forbids wandering on the lower volcano slopes. The track lies between two hills. The snow that dropped out at night gradually thaws in hot rays of the April sun. Then, rather gentle, slope begins. It is not frosty, but the wind is so strong that it almost knocks down. Having gone down from the volcano, travelers came to the highway and went to Tehran by the passing bus. The travel across Iran comes to the end. A visa-free world project goes on. There are new trips to the countries that are visa-free for Russians waiting for us.